Okay, so Gemini Pro is now available for everyone to use. And in this video, I'm going to go through how you can get started with Gemini Pro on Google AI Studio. I'll walk through the code in a collab and we'll look at some of the things that you can do both with the two current models that are publicly available, Gemini Pro for text and also Gemini Pro Vision. So let's get started and have a look at Google AI Studio. Okay, so when you go into Google Studio, you will need to accept some terms and conditions, and then you'll come to something like this. And the key thing that you want to do here is you want to get an API key. So if you just come up here and click get an API key, and you will then be able to create an API key. Now you have two options of how to do this. The first option is you basically just generate an API key in a new project. But if you do have a uh, Google Cloud and you want to tie it to your Google Cloud projects, you can create an API key in an existing project. So in here, you would see that I can basically come along, generate a new key, and then I'll be able to copy my key, which we're going to use in Google Colab. So you want to come down here, copy this, paste this somewhere for you to use, and then we're going to use this in Google Colab here. All right, so once you're back in here, you can actually test out the various models in here yourself. So you've got Gemini Pro here, and we've also got Gemini Vision here. So if I come in and I test out Pro by asking it to write an email to announce that Gemini Pro is now available to all developers. In this case, I'm just getting a straight completion in here. So you can see that it's basically going along and it's completing you know, what we've got in here. So Google AI Studio is what Maker Suite was before. So you can do freeform prompts, you can do structured prompts, you can do chat prompts. So if we come in here and put in a chat prompt, we can actually write in what's been going on in the conversation. And then we can come over and actually have a conversation here. And I can run the prompt and you'll see that I will get back an answer in this style. Now, if I wanted to put in other information and stuff like that, I could do that over here to continue this. At any point, I can basically select the temperature. I can change, you know, a number of various things in here. And one of the key things that I can do is I can come in and edit the safety settings. So you can see here, I can choose what do I want it to block? And then like, how strong do I want the blocks to be? So I've got harassment, hate speech, sexually explicit or dangerous content. So if I decide to basically block some of these full, I can actually choose to have some things go through and some things not go through. So you'll see that when we look at the API, this is something that you can also set in code for this. So let's jump into the code and have a look at how it all actually comes together in the code. Okay, so in this notebook, I'm going to go through some of the Gemini Pro basics. So we'll look at how to set up a model, how to do a generation, how to do some streaming, the safety settings, using the chat model, and then I'll finish up with some stuff with the Gemini Pro Vision model for basically looking at images and also doing visual question answering over images. So you want to make sure that you set up your secret and make sure you've got it turned on for Google AI Studio, your API key in there. And let's get going as we go through this. So as always, the collab will be in the description below the video. You can check it out. So one of the first things that we're going to do is basically just check out what uh, models we've got access to in here. And so you'll find that in here, we've got access to the you know previous Bison models, Text Bison and Chat Bison. We've also obviously got Gemini Pro, Gemini Pro Vision, and then an embedding model and the AQA model, which I'll talk about in a future video coming up here. So first off, we want to basically just set up the model. So here, I'm just going to basically tell it, this is the simplest generation you can do. And we're going to just get a response back by doing model generate content, and then tell me about the biggest planet. And that's going to give us back the answer or give us back a response. And then inside that, we're going to be able to access that via response.txt. And you can see that the response.txt that we're getting back is the biggest planet in our solar system is Jupiter. And then we've got a whole bunch of markdown that we've just used the markdown display to look at here for printing it out, etc. Another thing that we can do is we can always look at the prompt feedback, which will basically just tell us that was there anything in this 
that was objectionable based on what we've sort of had the settings here. So you can see that for this particular question, there was nothing that relates to that at all. All right, if we wanted to do streaming, we can basically just do the same thing and pass in stream equals true, and this will pass back chunks. So I'm not streaming them out. I'm just collecting them all in the response here, but you can see that they're actually come back with a bunch of different chunks for this as it's gone through here. All right, we can also configure the model. So if we want to actually do the settings, the advanced settings and the safety settings and stuff like that, we can come in here and do all of those things. So here you can see we can just set up a generation config. We're going to pass in the temperature, top P, top K, and then our maximum output tokens here. For the safety settings, we're passing in a list of dictionaries. And the dictionaries are going to basically be the category of safety. So in this case, it's harm category harassment. In this case, it's hate speech. In this case, it's sexually explicit. In this case, it's dangerous content. And I can basically set, just like we could do it in Google AI Studio, I can set these in code for, okay, what do I want it to block? So here I'm saying for hate speech, block anything that's medium and above. So this is one of the things that you can see back by doing, you saw up here, when I did the prompt feedback about the actual prompt, we could see if it was violating one of these, we would see it in there as we go through this. So that's our safety settings set up. We can now just instantiate the model. Here again, we're doing the model name, but now we're passing in the generation config, we're passing in the safety settings as well. We can then just pass in prompts and we can see that, okay, we're gonna get back, what is the third planet from the sun, the earth. And if I wanted to go and see, was there anything objectionable in there? I can see again, by looking at the response prompt feedback in here. If I want to use the chat model, I can do the same thing. So I've got the same setup for this. And now to make it the, the chat model, I'm just basically going to say model.startchat and I can pass in a history of the chat if I want to. I'm basically just going to call this the chat. So now I can do chat.sendMessage and you can see I can say, okay, tell me about the planet that comes after the earth from the sun. Let me run that again, see if I can get it to tell me a little bit more. Okay, it's going to just give one word answers here now. And straight away I can go in and I can actually run another one by just doing send message. And this has been added to the chat. So if I come in here and actually look at the chat history, I can see that, okay, we've got this chat history here of our conversation going on between the user and the model. And we can see if we look at actual the chat history list in here, we've got these dictionaries of text and a role, and then again, text, which is the answer, and then a role being model for this one. So they're the text models. It's very easy to set things up. You could set up a simple function if you want to do a bunch of generation. I'll look at doing some things like that, maybe where we test it on GSM 8K or something like that in a future video. Next up, we want to look at getting the vision part working. So here I'm just going to bring in a simple image from NASA. So we've got our picture of Saturn. I'm just going to resize that here. And now we can basically run this into the model. So here we're not passing in any text. We're just passing in the image itself in here. You can see here that what this has done, we passed in no text, but we passed in this image. And it knows that it's Saturn. It's just given us general information about that. Now, what if I run it again? Now I'm passing in a list where I'm passing in the image, but I'm also passing in, give me the name of, of the planet and some movies that have featured this. So here you can see that now we're going to get back. The planet is Saturn. Movies that have featured Saturn include, and then we've got a whole bunch of movies in there. Now, I'm not sure if all of these actually feature Saturn or not. I think Star Wars and stuff like that probably doesn't feature Saturn. But you can see that now the output is conditioned on the text and the image, not just the image by itself in here. So we can also do the same for having two images. So if we load in some multiple images, so we've got our image of Saturn, we've got our image of the Earth, and I ask it now, 
okay, give me some difference between these two planets. I haven't told it which planets. I've just passed in the two images in there. And now the response I'm getting back is the first image is of the Earth, the third planet from the Sun. And then we've got the second image is, is of Saturn, the sixth planet from the Sun. And then we've got some information about each of these, which is different in here. Just like with the text stuff, we've also got the responses that we can get back as we go through this. So I'll stop it here for now with this video. In some of the future videos, we'll look at using Gemini Pro with LangChain. And we'll also look at how you can actually do function calling with Gemini Pro as well. So those will be out in the next day or so. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. Don't forget that the CodeLab is in the actual description. You can have a play with this yourself. You'll need to make your own API key and then put it into the secrets area. But once you've done that, you can use this. As always, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.